There were a couple of reasons for that. One was he was a bit of a greenie. He liked um, to have the, the trees and the, the gardens. It was also apparently the distance or the width of the parklands prior to the city was the distance a cannonball could be fired. So it was also part of a defence system. so many different religions represented here and that's why it's called the City of Churches because on the coach no later than 3.30 to head off to our winery, hey, hey Steve. Cheers! Cheers! Oh, okay, just stay up. I know he's brilliant, I know. You're the official photographer. I'm making now. I just sent everyone to head up.
Half a jeans. It's just the legs are not good, isn't it? <laughs> Do very well. Oh, this is not going into a church, isn't it? I'm the door person, Annie. <laughs> So there's a whole mix of no venison. Oh. No, don't no, no, no venison. <laughs> but funny you're saying that I've got venison too. Sharon, my partner in there, we, we manage the caretakers of Martindale Hall. 
Uh, Martindale was built in 1879 by young Edmund Bowman. Now, when young Edmund was 11, his father, who had been complaining of dizzy spells, was crossing the Wakefield River on the property, some 9,500 acres. They believed he had a dizzy spell. The river was swollen at the time. He fell in and he was drowned. So young Edmund was sent with his younger brother to Cambridge University in England. And obviously, it was while he was there, he fell in love with all that English country gentleman type affair. At the age of 21, he came into his inheritance, which is Martindale Station, which was the 9,500 acres and some 400, 350, 400,000 pounds. Phenomenal amount of money in them days. Quite to about $150 million today. Young 21 year old. He commissioned an architect in London to design Martindale. He brought out 50 craftsmen from England with him. Came to Australia, he hired a dozen carpenters from Victoria and two from South Australia, and they built Martindale Hall here at a cost of £30,000 in 23 months. Remember, it was all built by hand, by hand tools. There would have been a workforce of about 70. They would have worked six days a week. They lived in a tent city down there on the Wakefield River, and they completed it in 23 months. £30,000 back then would have built 120 houses. So they could have built a town for the cost of this building. It has some 32 rooms. It's an Italian Georgian influence. There's seven rooms down in the cellar. Feel free to go down the cellar if you'd like. There's a sign that says keep out, but feel free to pop down there and have a look. <laughs> Had hot and cold running water. They pumped the water from the Wakefield River to a 95,000 gallon holding tank up on the hill behind the property, and it was gravity fed. <coughs> the hot water went through a boiler system in the laundry, condensed up through a pipework into a holding tank in the ceiling, up in the roof, and they had a hot and cold water upstairs. Flushing toilets. All the lighting was gas. They produced their own gas on the property. They had a gas pump that piped the gas, a carbide gas, into the home. They had a racing track. They had a polo field. They had a cricket pitch. Cricket pitch. They had a boat and lake. It had a live hair coursing track. The very sportsman orientated young Edmund was. As it said, 32 rooms. A right. couple of things of note. The fireplace in the drawing room won a Paris art show in 1873 and was purchased by Edmund Bowman for this building at a cost of 75 pounds. And also, uh, oh, what else was there? Upstairs, all the wallpaper in this building is original. William Morris was made in London for this building at the time, by when it was built. Everything in here belongs at the moment to Mortlocks except the billiard table. The billiard table in that billiard room is a Bowman billiard table. They put the billiard table in, then they completed the wall. So when young Edmund sold up and sold over at the auction, he couldn't get his billiard table out. <laughs> so young Edmund, he lived here for some nine, ten years. In that time, he had an aggressive land grab. He owned some 85,000 acres. He leased 3,500 square mile on the Flinders Ranges, and he leased numerous other properties. There was a depression. The commodity prices has plummeted. Bowman money was all from wool, which was the commodity of the day, and there was, South Australia was gripped in a severe drought. He had to start selling off all his assets, and in the end, this was the last one he tried to hang on to, because this is what his father started. Right? But he couldn't hang on to it, so he tried to sell it at auction. He was hoping to get £44,000 for it, but he didn't get a bid. <coughs> Up rode Tenant Mortlock from Adelaide on his horse, three day horse ride back then, banged on the front door. The housekeeper sent him around the back, thought he was looking for a fee or a handout, <laughs> which then days, you remember, a depression, a lot of people on the road looking for work and food. He said, No, I've come here to buy Martindale. And he bought Martindale property that day for £33,000. Still, he hasn't he had the money in his saddlebags, which is a lot of rubbish. He would, have to bring them. he would have signed a cheque. And he bought it as a wedding present for his wife, Rosie. Now, Rosie was very uh, class orientated, very generous for money, but very class orientated. Everyone had their place. If she had a dress made, she'd buy all the material so no one else could keep, uh, have that same material in her dress. She kept it down on herself, all those bolts of material. So the Morlocks lived here for some 65 years, 75 years. In that time, they had six children here. Now, four of those children died under the age of nine, and the two surviving brothers, Ransom, he died at 35, he fell overboard of a, 
on, off a boat in Colombo Bay in Ceylon, or Sri Lanka now, and young Jack, uh, or John Morlock, everyone calls him Jack, he ran the property, he died at the age of 50 in 1955, and he ran the property with, property with his brother. Now, young Jack, a young woman came here named Dorothy Beach. She worked for Elvis Farming. Elvis Farming done all the book work for the Mortlocks. And she and Jack developed a serious relationship. It wasn't just a fling, it was serious. But Jack wouldn't propose because mum, remember, everyone had their past, said you don't marry the hired help, you can get better. When mother died, Jack went down on his knee and proposed to Dorothy again, or first time up, and she refused to marry him. And I think she married him, just, she wouldn't marry him out of principle. They still lived together, still had a relationship, but she wouldn't wed him. Nine years later, they did get married, and he died 15 months after that. <laughs> and I think the only reason she got married, because they knew Jack was ill, and if Jack died, Dorothy would have been out of the wall with nothing back then. <laughs> so in the end, she wound up being a main trustee along with Elvis, and so she wound up with everything. She lived here till 1965 and decided to move out, took what she wanted, gave a pile of stuff away, donated the crystal chandelier back to Ayers House in Adelaide, where the Mortlocks bought it when Ayers House closed, and then moved to Kensington in Adelaide. This was all bequeathed to the Adelaide University. They took it over in 1965. In 1985, they separated the building onto 48 acres, handed it to the state government. They kept the farm, nine and a half thousand acre farm, which they sold later, I believe, for $20 million. Now the university doesn't have nothing to do with this building, only the state government. Everything in here, you see, all the artworks is original, it's all Mortlock, all the tapestries, 18th century, all Mortlock, everything in the, uh, the library, the pool room, is all original, in the smoking room, the dining room chairs aren't original, but everything else is. Upstairs, the main two bedrooms and a couple of wardrobes are original, the sewing room, and then the rest has all been added. When you're up in stairs, have a look at the fireplace, above the fireplace over here in the autumn room. There's a picture of two dogs. If I could take anything in this building, that's the one I'd take. Every hair on those dogs is hand-stitched silver. It's a beautiful work of art. It looks like a photograph. So feel free to wander around. You can start anywhere you like. As I said, you'll see on the chair there a little uh, picture frame. That will give you a bit of a history of what's in here. There's one in the dining room, in the billiard room, etc. And if anyone needs any questions, please feel free to just come up and ask, and I'm you sure they'll have this thing. You have this thing here. Oh, no. You used to be able to stay here. Yeah. That stopped eight years ago. Yeah. And the reason the, the government stopped that, they said it was too hard on the building to wear and tear. Yeah. So all the damage in this building is from overnight stays. Yeah. Overnight stays had free run after dinner. Yeah. <laughs> Accidents happen, you know, people touch things, you know, yeah. there's no one around, and things get broken. Yeah. So that's why they stop. Uh, we still have functions here, but no overnight stays. You said the government, are we talking about national trust? No, state government, state government, and it comes under the banner of DU, DU, Park and Environment and Water, because it's a conservation park, yeah. and they look after all the conservation parks in South Australia. So it's under their banner, that we're under their budget. We're at the end of the line. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank
marry the he was the um, Yeah, wow. I know. And that wasn't so far long ago. No. Oh, yeah, people are funny when it comes to money, aren't they? Yeah. Oh, he was, yeah, very snobby. Yeah. Very far-sorry. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, oh, yes. Trying to get my camera. And it's hard to on um, different lights. Well, it's doing this straight over the couch. That's that, but Jig City. I don't want to watch Jig City. And then press that and see what happens. minutes and then head off around half past four and into our accommodation at about quarter to five.
crossing about two or two and a half years. Yeah, yeah. That's, I was talking to Joy and I said, yes. <laughs> Thank you. 